Good evening, Mr. Kowe. You are welcome again today to online facilitation. Today, we are going to be looking at a different uh, topic. The last time we met, we saw the research techniques and we, run through, we ran through it. We looked at the different types of uh, literature, we looked at literature review, the, di the different types of um, sources of information. We looked at the data, different types of databases, and we looked at open educational resources. But today we are going to be looking at a different aspect of your course, and that is library catalogs. Library catalogs. What are these? What are these catalogs? And why do you need library catalog? Now, usually when you walk into a library, you will see volumes of materials. The first thing is that you will get confused. You will know how to get started. And that is the essence of the library catalog, to help you get started and not get confused. So what is a library catalog? A library catalog is seen as a complete organized record of all libraries' contents. All library contents. They are organized using different access points. I'm going to be explaining to you what access point means. Now, when you walk into a library, there are different types of catalogs. Now, what, is, what do you find in a catalog? What you find are just bibliographic records of what each library has. A complete bibliographic record of the content of the library. That is what we have. And I, I will explain to you what we mean by access points. Because even though they are complete bibliographic graphic records, they are entered with different headings. So it's now based on the headings you want to, 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 to search. Maybe you want to search through the subject, you want to search through the title, you want to search through uh, the, the author. All these are access points. Now we will get, we'll get to that. Now, like I told you, access points are headings that users employ in order to locate needed materials. I have explained it to you. I told you that access point simply means the headings you want to use to search. Now you may come into the library, for instance, and what you have is the author of a particular book. So you will just want to go to, to the library catalog, searching that author. Now the, the catalog, the author catalog is likely to, to, to have collected all authors and arrange them alphabetically. So when you want to go through the author catalog, you will have to go and search alphabetically that author's surname. Then you can also have the, the, the subject catalog. It simply means that those materials there have been entered according to their subject. So if, per, per, uh, for example, you have entered a library and what you have in mind is a particular subject, a broad subject, and you don't really have a particular book in mind, Maybe you just need a book on library science. You can just go to the catalog and see the areas, the area, the subject area uh, labeled library science. All library science books will be listed here again by subject alphabetically. So it's easy for you to, to locate. Then you can also say you want to go by the title. Now, you may have a particular title in mind already coming to the library you know the title of the book. You may not know the, the author, but because you have the title, you can go straight to the title catalog and the titles are arranged alphabetically. Then that way you, are easy, you easily locate the material you are looking for. Now we are looking, we are going to be looking at the different types of catalog. You know, the essence of this course is for you to know your way around. 
and how to use the facilities of the library. That is the essence of this course. So walking into the library, different libraries use different types of catalogs. So I want to, to get to used to different types of catalogs. By paraventure, you walk into a library and the type of catalog they may have may be book catalog. And, and you walk into another library and the type of catalog that they have there may be card catalog. You can walk into a library and the type of catalog there may be opaque. So there are different types of catalog. Now, what are these different types of catalog? You can have book catalog, you have the card catalog, you have the microphone catalog and the online catalog, which we usually refer to as the, as the OPAC. Now, what is a book catalog? What do you mean by a book catalog? A book catalog lists bibliographic records in alphabetical order by various entries on pages of a book. I want to explain. You will enter into a library and you ask for a catalog. What they will simply give to you is a book. They have already listed all the, 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 the bibliographic records of the library in that particular book alphabetically for you. So what you have are entries on pages of a book. That is a book catalog. If, for instance, you come to, to Wusetu Library, if you come to Wusetu Library, Abuja, what, what you maintain are book catalogs. Now, the book catalogs we have, we have the subject catalog, we have the title catalog, and we, we also have the author catalogs. So we, have, we maintain the, uh, three entries, that those three access points, but a book catalog. I hope it's clear. So you, you have advantages and disadvantages of each type of catalogs. Then depending on the type of catalog you are using, each one has advantage and the other one, or the other one may have you know, an advantage over the other one. But for instance, the book catalog has some advantages. Now, just like, you know, if you come to the library, is those book catalogs that we keep for you, maintain for you, they are easy, is easy to use, ease of use. Immediately you are given, you know, you, you are, it is portable. You can always carry it about. You can always open it. You don't need assistance from the librarian. On your own, you can fish out what you are looking for. The book catalog is easy to use and is portable. You can carry it because it's not really voluminous to so any section of the library and you can use it easily. And the book catalog too is not very expensive to maintain. It's not, it's not expensive. So because of it, if some libraries maintain the book catalog. And also the book catalog has its own disadvantages. This book catalog is seen as the oldest type of catalog. It's the oldest type of catalog. Apart from that, it has its own disadvantages. What are the disadvantages of a book catalog? Number one is that it's not flexible. It's not flexible. What do we mean when we talk about flexibility? We are talking about updating. You can't easily update a book catalog. So you can't, because you can't easily update it. You know, if you need to update a book catalog, you will need to, 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 to start, to, you will need to, to type a whole book and delete maybe a whole page. It's not, it's cumbersome. So updating is not flexible. It's not easy to add new record and to do uh, obsolete record. Then the, the, it's also expensive in a way. So I want us to take note of something. When we talk about cost, sometimes we hear me say advantage is not expensive. Disadvantage, it is expensive. Now we are looking at it from different dimensions. When you look at the book capital. So start off with the book catalog is not expensive, but it becomes expensive when you have several users 
wanting to use the same catalog. So what do you need to do? You need to have multiple copies. And to reproduce multiple copies of a book catalog is expensive. So eventually, it becomes expensive. So maintaining a book catalog is expensive because for all of my users to have access to this catalog at the same time, I need to reproduce multiple copies. Only one person can use that book catalog at a time. So you need, and it's a disadvantage. The fact that it's only one person at a time can use a book catalog is a disadvantage. Now, we will be getting to some of some catalogs that several people can be using at the same time. They will be having access to the catalog at the same time. Like the OPA, we'll get to that. Like the microphone catalog, we'll get to that. So we have looked at the book catalog. We have looked at the advantages of a book catalog, it is portable. We have also looked at the disadvantages of a book catalog, it's not flexible. And so you know, whenever you look at it, you are reading, make sure that you read critically to note the advantages and the disadvantages of the different types of catalog. Now we also have another type of catalog, which is the card catalog. This card catalog, is very, very traditional as well. It is a file of loose cards, usually in catalog cabinets, showing the users the library collections. Loose cards, I'm sure some of us must have come across uh, card catalogs. They are usually in, in cabinets, but also, as I discussed earlier, they have advantages and they have disadvantages. So what are the advantages of the card catalog over, for instance, the book catalog? Number one is that the card catalog is flexible. When I say it's flexible, it is a relative terminology. It is flexible, but some are even more flexible than this card catalog, like the OPAC catalog is more flexible. But comparatively to the, the book catalog, Card catalog is flexible. It's flexible because you can easily update it. Because they contain loose card notes, you can easily remove an obsolete record. And because they, are, they contain loose card, you can easily insert a new record. So it makes it very flexible for updating. Another advantage of the card catalog is that is easy, ease of use. If you can easily use it. Most of our students, of our students generally, they are conversant with the card catalog. It's easy to use. Once you get there, you don't get confused. It's easy to use. Apart from the fact that it's easy to use, several users can actually have access to the card catalog at the same time. Why? Because they are arranged in such a way and it's large. So maybe you want to search for something under A and I'm searching for something under C. I can, I can have at the same time search with you. While you are searching under A, I will be searching under B because the, 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 the trace can easily be removed. The trace can easily be removed, so it's easy. The cost of maintaining the card catalogs is also low. The maintenance of card catalogs is low. It's not very expensive. It's not like uh, the, the book catalog that you have to, to reproduce multiple copies. So to maintain it is easy. You can easily remove a card, reprint it, and, and insert it again. So it's easy to maintain the card catalog. So those are few identified advantages of card catalog. Now let us look at the disadvantages of a card catalog. As it has advantages, it equally has disadvantages. It will get to a point that especially as the library is expanding, and the library is acquiring more content. You will need more space. You will need more cabinets. And that means you will need more space. And you know that 
in recent times, there is always a problem of space. So you are likely to run out of space after some time. Another disadvantage of card catalog is that of human error. Because it's not automatic, it's not computer-based, it's human, human beings that are entering the cards, filing the cards, there is likely to be human error. So if that aspect cannot be eliminated, you may see errors here and there. Then only a card can be seen at a particular time, unlike the OPAC. If you want to make a search now, maybe you want to particularly search for a particular uh, subject. If, uh, if you are searching for a particular subject, you will discover that only one, that particular subject, one record, you can only see one record at a time. If it is OPAC, for instance, you will see several records at the same time. You can make your choice from several records that will be displayed. Then filing also takes time. It takes time to file um, these cards in card catalog. Now, to take effect, a, 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 to, 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 to effect a change in a card catalog, you have you need to repaint, reprint the, the, a complete card. So that again is a, what, a disadvantage. So now we are going to be looking at microform catalogs. I don't want us to get bored about these catalogs. It is better that we look and get ourselves familiarized with the different types of catalog so that when you walk into the library, as I earlier mentioned to you, it will be easy for you to locate the materials that you are seeking without even needing assistance from the librarian. So that is the reason why I'm, I'm letting you know now the different types of catalogs that you are likely to meet in any form of library. Now you can also meet what we call the microform catalog. Now, what are the microform catalogs? The microform catalogs are photograph card catalogs or screen images that are transferred onto microphone. Now, this type of microform catalogs, they also have advantages and they have disadvantages. If I say ease of use, why am I saying that it's easy to use? I'm saying so because many records can be viewed at the same time, unlike the card catalog. Remember that I mentioned that it's a disadvantage with the card catalog. You can only see a card at a time, invariably meaning that you can only see a record at a time. But with the microphone catalog, you can view many records at the same time. So that is a, a plus. And it, now also size. The microphone catalog, can take up so many records because it has large storage space, much more than the other types of catalog, except for the OPAC. So you can see that it, it takes up little storage space. So that is an advantage. Again, the card, the microphone catalog is cheap to reproduce. I'm only saying cheap here in terms of cost for reproduction. But if you are going to set, set up a microphone catalog, it will be expensive because you will need equipment. Now, what are the disadvantages of microphone catalog? Let's look at the disadvantages of microphone catalog. Again, you will see ease of use. Ease of use. You know, we saw ease of use as a, a, an advantage. You have to explain it. We saw it as an advantage in that the students can view many records at the same time. It becomes easier for the students. Now, ease of use in that most students don't want to use the microphone catalog because it's technical. It's technical. So it's, and it's not even common. You are not likely to find it in most uh, uh, the libraries. Then flexibility is also a problem 
with the microphone catalog. What do I mean? Remember when I explained flexibility, I explained it in terms of updating of records. It's not easy for you to insert records and it's not easy for you to delete records. Now, it is the same problem with microphone catalog. That is not easy at all. You can't update it easily. Again, cost is a problem. Remember that cost was an advantage, but now it is standing again as a disadvantage. A disadvantage in the sense that setting up a microphone catalog is not easy. It's an expensive venture. You need some machines. You need microfiche readers. And this on its own is expensive. So having looked at that, we are going to be looking again at the, the other type. I think this is the last type of catalog we'll be looking at, the public access catalog. Public access, online public access catalog. That is the OPAC catalog. This type of catalog is the most modern form of catalog. It is the most, also the most efficient of all of the catalogs. It is the most modern form, is the most efficient. Now, one, you need a computer with a large memory for this type of, for OPAC catalog. It also has advantages and has disadvantages. One of the advantage of the OPAC is that more items of information can be searched. With the OPAC, you can search more items. You can search through different access points. You can use different words. If you are using a car catalog, for instance, by the time you search, maybe using two, two keywords, you will be fed up, you'll be tired. But with the OPAC, you can use different keywords. And it is very rapid. It's not slow. Response is almost immediate. And you can also retrieve information, large information. You can retrieve large information. Easily, you can use different access points. Easily, you can retrieve huge amounts of information. And distance is not a barrier. For OPAC, this is an advantage that I enjoy a lot. You can use, for instance, the OPAC, especially if it's online, anywhere. You can assess our OPAC in US, in UK, around the globe. So it makes it distance, is not a barrier. It removes that, the, uh, and then multiple users can use at the same time. It allows multiple users at the same time. Even a thousand users can be using our OPA and it, it will not make any difference it, from different locations. So you see that it has a lot of advantages over the other types of catalog. Then, as it has advantages too, it has disadvantages. One of the disadvantages of uh, uh, OPAC is, for instance, spelling error. If you have an even typographical error, spelling error, you will have wrong results. Then too much information that is being retrieved at the same time can get you confused. You may not even know the relevant ones and to see the, the relevant ones you will be confused. And again, to use the OPAC effectively, training is required. So training is required. That again is a disadvantage that we have to train all of the library users to be able to use our OPAC. A major problem, especially in, in Nigeria, is the epileptic, epileptic power supply. This is a major problem. You will discover that if there is no light, you know, source of power, you cannot use your OPAC. On this, we have quickly run through the different types of catalog. I don't know. I want to thank you for listening. I don't know if you have questions before I move on to the next topic. Do we have questions? 
on the different types of catalog. Questions, Mr. Ibe. Mr. Ibe. Hello, Mr. Yes, ma. Please, do you have any questions? Did you understand? Yes, you mentioned of types of catalog. Yes. Yeah, okay, I have here the OPEC, the photograph. Yes. Yes. And you thought about the advantage of OPEC catalog. So you said that different items can be searched using OPEC catalog. Yes. Then the disadvantage, uh, disadvantage that too much information, mm -hmm. that it contains too much information, then training is also required. Yes. Then another one of the disadvantages that is because of the epileptic power supply. Yes. People, we always find it difficult to have access to it. You are right. So it's clear. I, I, you are yes, ma'am. And you are following. So all you need to do is to read up. Read up and get used to the advantages and disadvantages of the different types of catalog. And knowing the different advantages and, and disadvantages, you won't have problem in your exams. You are able to list the okay. catalog, and you know them, you know what they are, and then you know the, 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 the advantages and the, the disadvantages of the different types of catalog. I don't want us to go deep into it, because I see this course as an in, in introductory course to, to, li to use of library or the library science. So I don't want us, there are other types of access points, so like series and all that, but with this, you will get started and you will not be confused using the library resources. Okay? Okay. Good. Okay. Now we are going to be looking at, I don't want us to get, you know, tired or, you know, lose interest in what I'm going to be explaining now. So whenever you mention classification, you, you will notice that most, even people in library science, they will become, you know, weary of the topic. But I don't want us to get weary of this topic. Why? Because we are not expected to start cataloging. You are not going to go in depth. You are only going to learn areas that will be beneficial to you. Do you understand it? As a student, you walk into the library. Yes, Why do I need to know? classification scheme. That is all what is treated for you here. So you are not yet a librarian, so I'm not going to be going in depth for you to, to know how to classify a book. So don't be bored because it's as simple as walking into the library. I know the class mark, H is uh, for, for social sciences. Okay, so I need to walk this direction and get the materials I need. It's as simple as that, okay? I don't want a situation where you okay. walk into the library, you don't know what a chef list is, you don't know how to help yourself. Instead of going to, to S for agriculture, you go to, maybe you go to M, music. So that is all. So I don't want you to lose interest in the types of classification scheme. Is that clear? So we are going to be looking at Classification scheme as it confines you eh, as students. Now, what is a classification scheme? Classific what is classification in general? I'm sure the term classification is not new to us. Is it new to us? Is it new? eBay classification. No. It's not eh, eh. when you hear classification, it means you are categorizing, is it not so? Grouping, yes, ma grouping something. So it's as simple as that too here. Classification is the art of grouping like documents together. Basically according to their subject content and forms in which they appear. Now, when it comes to library classification, two things are paramount. When you want to group documents in the library, two things paramount and it's good that you note it number one is the subject content and number two is the form if i use form it might also mean format the format in which that material appears maybe cd form electronic form print form 
Do we understand? So in grouping yes. Yes, in, in the library, two things are put into consideration. Number one, the subject, content of that material. Number two, the form or format in which that material appears. I hope it's as simple as that. Do we understand? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Now, what, why do you need to classify? Why do you need to classify? We have just uh, 10 minutes left. So we'll just quickly brush through this. Why do you need to classify? We need to classify to increase the utility of library resources to their optimum. If there's no form of classification, you just walk into the library. Yes, you, you know the time you will need to search out one, liter, one material in your, in your area. It will be a too cumbersome for you. You will waste time and you will not even see the materials you are looking for. And even if that, that material is hidden in the library, that material is lost. The material is not being used, so it is useless in the library. It is a lost, it's as good as a lost material. So you discover that one advantage is to increase the utility of library resources to their mat, mat, uh, optimum. That is the reason why you yourself should also know a little bit of our classification scheme so that you can increase the utility of our library resources. And also, it will save your time. It saves the user's time. Okay, now there are different types of library classification schemes, different types. You know, at the beginning of this lecture, we looked at the different types of libraries. Usually, most times, the different types of libraries use according, accordingly use library classification. For instance, I will give you an example. The academic library, which we have treated earlier on, we prefer to use Library of Congress because it's good for academic libraries. So different types of library use different types of classification scheme. Now, what are the available classification schemes? Number one, you, we have more than what I listed here, but these five are very common. You have the Moore's classification scheme, it's not listed here, but let us begin to, to, to list. Number one, Library of Congress classification scheme. Number two, Dewey Decimal classification scheme. Number three, universal decimal classification. Number four, Bliss classification scheme. Number five, colon classification scheme. I can list other types of classification for you, like I listed MUES the other time. So there are still some type of classification schemes that are available. MUES is, is actually relatively common. Why? Because it's specifically used for law libraries. So you can put that as your C type of uh, classification scheme. Now, let us look at these different types of classification scheme one by one. But I want you to pay particular attention to Library of Congress classification scheme. Why am I saying so? Because you are an academic, you are in a university environment, you are going to be meeting Library of Congress classification scheme. Most libraries use Library of Congress classification scheme. National Open Library, National Open University of Nigeria Library uses Library of Congress classification scheme. So I want you to pay little attention to Library of Congress classification scheme. Now, Library of Congress classification scheme has 21 main classes, 21 main classes. And these classes are grouped according to subjects. I'm sure if you go back to your course materials, you will see that A is standing for generalities, B is standing for uh, 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 religion. You see, standing for history. D2, standing for history. E, so G, geography. H, from A to Z. Each alphabet stands for one particular subject. I hope this is clear. This aspect is very important. The first 21 classes, just like A to Z, and each, each, each uh, alphabet stands for a, a, a subject. Is that clear? Or a field of study? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good. Then, this Library of Congress classification scheme, it uses missed notation. What do I mean by using missed notation? When I say it uses mixed notation, it means that 
he used alphabet and number. The class mark you will be seeing, you know what a class mark is. I'm sure you have visited a library. If you have not visited a library until now, please, I will advise you to visit a library and come to Wusetu Library. When you come there, you will see all those labels we put on the spine of the book. Those labels on that spine of the book, they are the class mark and they are LC class mark. Now, what we are saying that those labels are alpha numeric. They are our notations. They are what we call notations. I want you to take note because I may be asking a question. What type of, what type, what type of notation, notation does the uh, Library of Congress use? And you should be able to tell me that it uses mixed notation, alpha numeric. Alpha numeric, meaning alphabet and numbers. Okay? So, and then apart from that, it also uses what we call the quarter numbers. Quarter numbers. Now, I want to let you know what a quarter number is. A quarter number is the author's unique number. Now, no two authors we have the same quarter number, except they have exactly the same surname. But even at that, you still try to distinguish them. It's a unique number for every author. So that is what we call quarter number. So with this, the quarter number and the and the, the mix and, 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 and the LC number make up the class mark that you will see appear at the spine of every book. Now, I want to, if it's not at the spine, you know, you will see it at the at the upper side of a book. Those numbers are very vital. Whenever you walk into the library and you need the material, all you need from those access points that or the catalogs is to copy those numbers. Those numbers will tell you the exact location of that book on the shelf. It's so easy. If you can't bring it, get access it yourself. Just give those call numbers. We call them call numbers to any librarian and they will quickly help you to fish out the material. Now, there are other types of classification scheme. For instance, the, the Dewey Decimal Classification that we have mentioned earlier is the first and the oldest type of classification scheme. The Dewey type of classification scheme is still used up to today in most school libraries, even in Nigeria here. If you walk into the, our school libraries, so what they will be using is the Dewey classification scheme. You see, for you now, it may not be very, very important for you, but for a librarian, it is good for him to know how to classify using Library of Congress classification scheme, using Dewey classification scheme. Is that clear? Is that clear? Now, I, we have looked at the, uh, the Library of Congress classification scheme. I'm referring you back to your course material. What I discussed is not comprehensive. I want to be able to ask, yes, what is the class map for education? And you'll be able to tell me that the, the class map for education is this. What is the class map for psychology? You should be able to tell me that is that. So you will have to look at it. Now, looking at, again, the, the, the Dewey uh, decimal classification, coming back to Dewey decimal classification, we are looking at the notation. Remember that we said the notation for Library of Congress is missed. Did we not say so? It's missed. And I said it's alpha numeric. But the notation for Dewey classification is pure. It's pure, contrary to what we have for Library of Congress classification. It's pure, it's not missed, that's what I mean. And it uses just numbers use it just numbers. Now, even for further specificity, that you want to go details, you want to go in detail of that particular subject field, what does it use? It employs decimal. That is why they call it Dewey Decimal Classification. I want to be specific about that subject. I'm not just looking at physics, I'm looking at neutrons. To get neutrons under physics, I have to use decimal to, to, for specificity. Now, we are looking at another type of 
classification scheme, and that is the universal decimal classification. Universal decimal classification. This type of classification is based on the Dewey decimal class, fifth edition of Dewey decimal classification. It's not usually used around us here in Nigeria. Most people, is most French-speaking countries.